When speaking with clients, friends, and through the use of running polls with hundreds of thousands of you on the topic of stretching, I have been confronted with a staggering more than 50% of people admittedly saying that they don't partake in any type of stretching. Most often, the top reason most people don't stretch is either they don't feel they have the time and they just aren't really sure what stretches they should be doing or what the benefits really are. It seems obvious to me that the biggest issue is that the benefits of stretching aren't widely known. So it comes as no shock that the majority of us don't feel we have the need to spend any time trying to learn the movements and finding the time to do them. So is stretching really that important? And which of us is most in need of putting more focus on our flexibility? As it turns out, stretching at its core is really the fundamental building blocks for our everyday functional movements, not just in the gym, but in our daily lives. Consider this, the average American is working right around 34 hours per week. Add this to the fact that the average American reportedly spends right around 17,600 minutes or the equivalent of over 293 hours in their cars per year. This means that it is likely that you spend around six hours in your car commuting per week. Considering that most Americans reportedly sleep around seven hours per night, this would mean that out of the average 17 hours per day we are awake, we are systematically spending around seven to eight of those hours each day spent between sitting on our chairs behind our desks at work or behind the wheel of our car. And just maybe you're thinking, what does this have to do with me stretching? And the answer is it has everything to do with your quality of life, both in the office and car, and most especially in the free 10 or so hours a day that you spend really enjoying your life. The biggest issue with spending so much time sitting all day at work and then transferring back to your cars to sit through the second half of your commute to get home each day is that even those who have generally amazing posture are not able to sit in a position that is beneficial for our bodies for such extended periods of time. On this point, we may be thinking that it feels like we're giving our bodies a rest by sitting all day, and how bad can that be? The issue is that we are training our bodies to sit in a position for extended periods of time that our bodies just aren't meant to be stuck in. This causes certain muscles and ligaments to atrophy and shrink, just as we are doing when we are unknowingly slumping forward over our keyboards at work, causing our hip flexors, our core, and chest muscles to close in on themselves, all while simultaneously creating looser muscles throughout our back that is only impairing us from having proper control and stability in those muscles and ligaments in the other fundamental movements of our everyday lives. But it turns out that regular stretching has even more benefits, including being linked to reduced stress, improved sleep patterns, improves your range of motion and body awareness, along with some of the more notable benefits of reducing the risk of getting injured, increases athletic performance, and helping increase blood flow, which in turn helps increase overall endurance. It has been proven that warming up your muscles prior to athletic activity helps in producing better overall strength and power. It would seem that leaving stretching out of our regular routines is putting those of us who are doing so at both a competitive and functional disadvantage. And if this information isn't notable enough, let's take a look at some of the most common injuries that take place most often between athletes and those of us just going about our regular everyday routines. Most commonly, we consider muscle strains to be associated with athletes that are overtraining or maybe just run into some bad luck. Or we envision some elderly man or woman trying to lift a box or move around too quickly when their bodies can no longer support such movements. But the truth is that muscle strings are among some of the most common reasons that patients of all ages and lifestyles alike end up in doctor's offices. 
Simply put, a muscle strain is the stretching or tearing of muscle fibers. Most muscle strains happen for one of two reasons. Either the muscles have been stretched beyond its limits or has been forced to contract too strongly. In mild cases, only a few muscle fibers are stretched or torn and the muscle remains intact and considerably strong. However, in more severe cases, the strained muscle may be torn and unable to function properly, causing an array of aches, pains, and feelings of pulling and weakness of the area affected. Although the risk of muscle strain is especially high during sports activity, it is also very common to strain muscles by doing common everyday movements, such as taking a step up the stairs at work, or bending down to pick something up, or even while we're just leaning forward to tie our shoes. And while we may associate the risk factors to be more common in athletes or elderly, we aren't perhaps considering the fact that we are training our bodies to be prone to being out of alignment or having the proper strength versus flexibility due to the most common day which we touched on as being spent behind a desk or in our cars. The good news is that helping prevent unwanted muscle strains is as simple as giving your bodies the proper warm-ups prior to exercise and making sure that we are implementing stretching either after our workouts or in our own homes at some point during our daily lives. And with the symptoms of muscle strains lasting in severity anywhere from a few days to a possible 10 weeks or more to heal, it would seem that spending the extra few minutes per day to do some stretching is worth every minute we are saving ourselves from possible injury. Here are a few easy ways to help prevent muscle strain. It's important to take five to 10 minutes to warm up prior to participating in sports and any other activity that will be putting significant amount of strain on our bodies. These warm-ups should consist of dynamic stretching that mirror the movements that you will be doing during your workout. Dynamic stretching refers to a category of stretching that is performed by moving through a challenging but comfortable range of motion repeatedly to help our bodies increase muscle elasticity, stability, and mobility by awakening and activating muscle groups we'll be using during our exercise for the more powerful movements ahead. Following exercise, we should be taking a period of around 10 or so minutes to partake in passive stretching as our body begins to cool down. Passive stretching means you're using some sort of outside assistance to help you achieve a stretch. This assistance could be simply using gravity with your body weight, a resistance band or strap, or the leverage from a personal trainer, friend, or stretching device. With passive stretching, you relax the muscles you're trying to stretch and rely on the external force to hold you in place. However, it's important to be aware to listen to our bodies during passive stretching, as the goal is not usually to prepare ourselves for the next gymnastics event at the Olympics. We wanna be sure not to stretch beyond our capabilities. The idea is that stretching our muscles in a relaxing and soothing manner rather than one that invokes pain. All in all, stretching is used to assist our bodies in proper movement during exercise and throughout the movements we do in our everyday lives. It seems that the benefits of creating a routine where we implement a few minutes each day to stretch is far more beneficial to us than just keeping us from getting injured. So let's get started with our stretching today.